Kaisar's legion is said to have conquered 86 tribes, 87 if you believe the armour worn by Gaius Magnus at Drywells is the result of a new tribe being conquered, and the rest of the legion merely have yet to learn of that information. Either way, most of these tribes have had their history and culture destroyed, leaving only a handful that we know of and can actually talk about. Kaisar's legion began with a Mormon missionary and two members of the followers of the Apocalypse travelling into the Grand Canyon to learn about the tribals that lived there and the languages they spoke, but they were soon captured and held for ransom by a tribe known as Blackfoots. This tribe was incompetent in regards to war, stratagem and tactics, and in the eyes of a man named Edward Sallow, a follower of the Apocalypse, it was only a matter of time until the Blackfoots were wiped out by warring tribes, of which there were several. Not wanting to leave his fate up to chance, he decided to help the Blackfoots, instructing them in the art of war, military strategy and small unit tactics, heavily citing literature from historical books about the Roman Empire. Sallow quickly impressed the Blackfoots, so much so they made him their leader. Under his guidance, they were soon introducing the concept of total war to the other tribes, who until now had only been playing at war. They had no idea how barbaric and savage true war could be, and Kaisar was more than happy to show them. Soon the Ridges, a rival tribe considered to be the Blackfoot's weakest enemy, were confronted. They refused to surrender, so Kaisar had every man, woman, and child killed, their bodies piled high for all to see. The next tribe, the Kaibabs, were also confronted, but this time Kaisar had an emissary taken from their tribe to the carnage that befell the Ridges, and that bloody barbaric monument served its purpose well as they surrendered themselves to Kaisar and so did the Freydonians after that. In fact, all of the insignificant tribes followed suit, out of fear, out of respect, and out of violence, but Kaisar was just getting started. He turned these tribes into the Legion, sculpting them after the Roman Empire because of its parallels to what he considered to be normal for the post-apocalyptic world. It also allowed him to erase their individual identities and replace them all with a single culture, where individuals have no value outside of what they offer the greater whole, and in doing so, provide long-term stability. Aside from these tribes, many others have been assimilated or eradicated, all across Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico, resulting in 87 conquered tribes. But there are those that have managed to avoid their grasp, such as the Dead Horses from Rez, a place somewhere east of the Grand Canyon. The Dead Horses were introduced to the Legion through the Mormon missionary who was captured by the Blackfoots, a man named Joshua Graham, or Graham for my American friends, who now served Kaisar's Legion as the Malpais Legate. But before they could be assimilated, Joshua was called to the First Battle of Hoover Dam, where he failed and was punished, covered in pitch, set on fire, and sent plunging into the Grand Canyon to his death. Meanwhile, the dead horses were left alone, although they would eventually be forced from their home along the bank of the Colorado River to their new home in Zion Canyon, where Joshua, who had miraculously survived his execution, resided among the Mormons of New Canaan. But I'm getting ahead of myself. With the Grand Canyon conquered, the Legion branched out into the rest of Arizona, where they encountered their next target at Drywells, the Twisted Hares, the home tribe of Ulysses. The Twisted Hares were a powerful tribe that forged an alliance with Kaisar, and they became his scouts. Together they conquered many more tribes, including the tribe of Wolpez in Colta, who Kaisar states is a remarkable man from an unremarkable tribe. Having been a child at the time of their destruction, he no longer remembers their name, which is long forgotten. But the next tribe we do have an account of are the Hydebarks, the home tribe of Legate Linnaeus. The Legion surrounded the Hydebarks and their chieftain chose to surrender, and this decision enraged a particular Hydebark, so much so that he struck down his own chieftain before confronting the rest of his tribe. Fifteen tribals fell before the beast was knocked unconscious, his face permanently maimed in the process. Upon awakening, he was offered a mask to cover his scars and a position within the Legion, which he accepted provided he could kill the remaining male members of his tribe. Kaisar agreed on the condition he spare the boys, and so the Hydebarks became the 67th tribe to be conquered. With Linnaeus' strength, more tribes fell, including Painted Rock, one of the toughest tribes to inhabit Arizona. 
Whether they surrendered willingly or not, we don't know. But we do know that those from Painted Rock would become some of Kaisar's longest serving and most dangerous veterans. With Arizona almost in his pocket, Kaisar had just one tribe left to deal with before he could focus on conquering the neighboring states. Despite having an alliance with the Twisted Hares, Kaisar broke it and betrayed them. According to Ulysses, Wulpes in Kulta, now a man and head of the Frumentari, the eyes and ears of Kaisar, was responsible for conquering and enslaving his people. In a way, it's almost as if Wulpes was avenging his tribe, doing unto Ulysses what he had done to him. Their tribal identity was erased, and those that resisted were crucified along the sides of Interstate 40. Although a small part of their culture would persist with Ulysses, who continued to wear his braids as they reminded him of who he was and where he came from. With Arizona now conquered, Frumentari was sent into Utah, Colorado and New Mexico. Again, information is limited as the history of those that are assimilated into the Legion are erased, but much like Wulpes who was stolen as a child, another was taken, this time from the shores of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Decanus Dead Sea, the stolen child, would become a valuable member of the Legion, above all else craving glory in battle. And for his victory against a tribe known as the Sun Dogs, he was gifted a unique machete by his centurion known as the Liberator. Frumentari were also sent into Colorado, where they encountered Twin Mothers, another tribe that we don't know much about. We don't know if they fought or willingly surrendered, only that the tribe were always about teaching lessons, and Kaisar taught them their last. The only thing that remains of their culture is a powerful morphine-like bitter drink, a drink many legionaries would use during forced marches to push past the pain. By 2274, the Legion had conquered dozens of tribes, and the majority of four states, and then Ulysses became the first member of the Legion to cross the Colorado River and discover both Hoover Dam and the occupying forces known as the NCR. For three years, Kaisar strengthened his forces before laying siege to the dam, although his efforts were fruitless, and to show the surviving troops that defeat was not an option, Kaisar had his second-in-command put to death. After the first battle of Hoover Dam, Linnaeus, now acting as Joshua's replacement, was sent east on a campaign to replenish their numbers. In total, Linnaeus conquered 14 tribes and destroyed another five, including the Hang Dogs that inhabited the city of Denver. They were perhaps the most troublesome tribe for the Legate, as they had something no other tribe had – war dogs, hounds that could run down a grown man and tear him to shreds. After suffering heavy losses, Linnaeus began burning their dogs alive, which led to them surrendering as they could not bear the thought of their spirit animals burning in the afterlife. With that, they were integrated into the Legion, and Kaisar, seeing how useful the Hang Dog's talents were in taming dogs, made the male members of the tribe Houndmasters of the Legion. The final, and perhaps most well-known tribe in Utah, are the Whitelegs from Salt Lake City. They are one of the few tribes to already be adept at war, but they were poor at everything else. They raided and pillaged, and due to the Desert Rangers, who once kept them at bay, being absorbed into the NCR and retreating from their frontier outposts, the White Legs were able to expand and their population boomed. To their misfortune, their overbearing presence and predisposition for attacking caravans led to interstates being abandoned, which left them unable to provide for themselves. They didn't have the skills to settle nor the firepower to raid larger cities, and so they were expected to die out within a generation. That was until Ulysses, still a Legion emissary, arrived and gave them their answer. In return for destroying New Canaan and the deaths of all its inhabitants, the White Legs could join the Legion, which they gladly accepted, considering their alternative. Under Ulysses, they learned new combat skills, gained new weapons recovered from Old World and New Canaan caches, which strengthened them greatly, and with this new strength, they attacked New Canaan under the cover of night. The inhabitants had no time to react. Few fled, most died, the White Legs killed without mercy, and they didn't discriminate. The city was burned, along with those who barricaded themselves inside their homes, and the soil was salted to ensure nothing would ever grow again. Technically, they had completed their mission. In reality, Kaisar couldn't care less about New Canaan. What he wanted was the death of his ex-legate, who had failed him and survived a punishment that should have killed him. 
Since he was still alive, the White Legs were ordered into the canyons of Zion, where refugees, including Joshua, now known as the Burned Man, had sought refuge. Only once he was found and killed would they officially join the Legion at Kaisar's side. Although much like the Twisted Hares, they were sure to be stripped of their heritage and forced to join once Kaisar had what he wanted. Sadly, we don't know the names of any tribes from New Mexico. The only person from New Mexico that we know of is Siri, who the Legion enslaved around 2278 after they lost the First Battle of Hoover Dam and branched out into neighboring states to replenish their numbers, and through doing so, conquered New Mexico. With four states effectively conquered and a new four-legged weapon to deploy, the Legion began focusing their efforts on the upcoming Second Battle of Hoover Dam, and Frumentari were once again searching for tribes to conquer, only this time west of the Colorado River in California, and this can be seen at Red Rock Canyon, where the Great Khans are currently thinking about joining the Legion. After losing countless loved ones at the Bitter Springs Massacre, a day where NCR forces mistakenly slaughtered civilians affiliated with the Great Khans, many of them have turned to chems and alcohol in order to cope with the trauma. This current lifestyle is understandably intolerable to many Khans, including Papa Khan himself, who wants to leave behind a strong legacy, but fears he will be unable to. And it is this fear that Kaisar intends to exploit, by pretending he wants to recruit great warriors and will pay them land, wealth, and revenge against the NCR in return for their alliance at Hoover Dam. Papa Khan's hatred of the Republic is blinding, and all he can think of is getting revenge and being rewarded with positions of power, when in reality, they will serve as nothing more than cannon fodder. And once Kaisar has what he wants, he will have the survivors assimilated or eradicated, as he always does. For now, the outcome of the Second Battle of Hoover Dam is ambiguous. If the Legion were to win, then California would no doubt be conquered, and countless tribes, including the Great Khans, Boomers, and White Gloves would no doubt fall in line or be destroyed. But until we know for sure, you can decide their fate. I showed them total warfare. Like I said, there's a lot you can learn from old books. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.